Hello and welcome to another installment of Pennywise Popper. I'm your host, Jake Stiles, and today we're battling with Mono Black Control. Mono Black Control has been a tier 1 deck for a while now, and for good reason. Its creatures and spells are powerful, and it has the tools it needs to fight against both aggro and control decks. Let's look at some of the pieces of this deck. First, let's look at the creatures. These are the backbone of the deck. So the star of the deck in the bottom left is Grey Merchant of Asphodel, nicknamed Gary. He's a 5 mana 2-4, so his stats are not great, but when he enters the battlefield each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is your devotion to black. And devotion is every black symbol in permanence you control. So to support Gary, we have 3 Kuambaj Witches. They're uh, 2 mana 1-3. They have a very interesting ability on them. I'll read it because it's very hard to read the pre-modern card there. You tap it and it deals 1 damage to a target creature or player of your choice. And then your opponent gets to choose one creature or player of their choice to deal the damage to. So it's a symmetrical effect, but you get to decide when to activate it. Additionally, there are no one toughness creatures in the deck. So generally the opponent is just choosing to deal the damage to you. So basically you get a ping effect on a two mana creature for the cost of one life per ping. Occasionally they can target your creatures with it to combine it with a removal spell of their own to finish a creature off or to make combat math more difficult for you, but typically this is used to take out one toughness creatures on the opponent's side and also make combat math difficult for them. Next we have a creature that's both annoying to play against and awesome to play with. It's Chittering Rats. It's a 3 mana 2-2. Two -two. Importantly, its mana cost is 1 black black, so it provides 2 devotion to black for Gary. It says when it enters the battlefield, target opponent puts a card from his or her hand on top of his or her library. So basically, it skips their next draw step. Against opponents who can draw a lot of cards, this is just a minor setback. But against any deck that's drawing one card per turn, this is extremely devastating. Sometimes this can literally be a time walk effect. If your opponent didn't have anything to do on their turn, and then you play this, and they have to put a card back on top, and it's a dead card, and they're drawing it again with nothing to do with it, it, it might literally just be time walk against your opponent. Um, even in situations where it's not time walk, where your opponent has things to do or land drops to make and can still make progress, it's a very annoying effect. Especially if you can play multiple of these in a game, it makes it very hard for your opponent to find the tools that they need to combat you. The next three drop we have is Phyrexian Rager. It only provides one devotion, but its effect is pretty good. It's another 3 mana 2-2. Two -two. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose one life. So, like the Chittering Rats, this generates card advantage as the game goes on. And it's important to have creatures like this that both generate card advantage and do something in play. They're both 3 mana 2-2s, two so they don't affect the board ridiculously well. They're not great in combat, they're just fine. They can attack into 1-1s one or into nothing, but they don't tangle with 3-3s three or 4-4s four or any of the bigger creatures in the format. So, it's important to have permanents like this that count to add up your devotion for Gary while also providing some effect. And the card advantage effect that they provide is very good, both against aggro decks and control decks. Next we have Gurmag Angler. This is in here as a value spell. It's nice to have a 5-5 in the deck for when your opponent has a large creature and you happen to ha not have a removal spell for it. But also just the ability to play this, say on turn 5, play a 3-drop and then this for 2 mana or something like that. It it's very convenient having delve in the mana cost of a creature. You can play it whenever you want, whenever your graveyard is full, and it's just a very efficient spell most of the time. Moving on from the creatures, now we have the removal, and there is quite a lot of it in this deck. The top row here is targeted removal. Among them we have 3 Disfigure, very good against small or mid-sized creatures. You can combine it with a attack or a block to take down a larger creature if you need to, and it's just good insurance against aggro decks of all kinds, and utility creatures that you need to take out. Next we have Victim of Night as a 2 of. It says destroy target non-vampire, non-werewolf, non-zombie creature. This will kill almost anything you care about, as long as it doesn't have hexproof or it's not one of the relevant creature types. There are some of those creature types running around in Popper, especially zombies, we have two in our own deck. However, this will mostly kill anything. Next we have Oubliette, which is kind of like Victim of Night, except it costs one more, it costs one black black. But the difference here is, when it comes into play, it exiles a creature and all auras attached to it. And if it gets removed, the creature and the auras come back. It's basically Black's Journey to Nowhere. And the fact that it costs an extra black mana is mitigated by the fact that it also provides an extra black devotion. This will kill almost anything, but it also adds two devotion in the process, so this is a very valuable spell in the deck. 
Next we have Tendrils of Corruption, which is our most expensive target removal spell at 4 mana. However, it provides a very important aspect of the deck, which is life gain. Between the damage that you take from drawing cards with Sign in Blood, which we'll get to later, and Phyrexian Rager, which we already saw, it's very important that you gain life from both Grey Merchant and from Tendrils of Corruption. It helps you not kill yourself against aggro decks or especially burn decks. Sometimes against a burn deck that doesn't run creatures, you have to Tendrils of Corruption your own creatures just to stay alive. So it's nice to have the ability to gain that life back that you're losing from drawing cards with the Rager and Sign in Blood. Then we have our untarget removal on the bottom. So we were playing the full four Chainer's Edict because it's an extremely valuable spell. Unlike Victim of Night, where you get to choose your target, Chainer's Edict means they get to sacrifice a creature of their choice. So it's pretty bad against tokens. Um, however, it's good against a lot of other decks. And the main reason for that is the flashback. Basically, when you cast a spell that has flashback, you're essentially drawing a card. So when you cast Chainer's Edict for one into black, they sacrifice a creature, and then you've drawn a card that says target player sacrifices a creature and it costs seven. Now normally that's not a good spell, but when you get that card for free, as a result of playing a spell that's already pretty good by itself, it generates a ton of value. So although this is, this is not one of the card draw spells, it's one of the main value-getting spells in the deck. You'll have a lot of games where you're in an okay position, but because you have two Chainer's Edicts in your graveyard, you feel like you can't ever lose. Because you just have this value tucked away that you can use whenever you need to. And your opponent knows that, so they can't just play a single creature and pass without knowing that there's a chance that you can just flash back the Chainer's Edict and not worry about it. Lastly, we have a one of Pestilence. So, normally when you think that you're playing Popper, you would think that you're playing with commons, maybe the best cards from certain draft formats. Pestilence is not that type of card. Pestilence should very well be a rare, and was, for some reason, printed at common back in the day. So it's two black black for an enchantment. You pay a single black mana, it deals one damage to each creature and each player, and at the beginning of each end step, if no creatures are on the battlefield, you have to sacrifice it. So effectively, this is a wrath effect. However, let's say I have a Grey Merchant of Asphodel on the field that has four toughness. That means that I can deal three damage to each creature and each player every single turn and I never have to give away my Pestilence because my Grey Merchant's on the field, keeping it from being sacrificed. You can do some cool stuff with this, some fancy stuff, not just wiping the board. You can also keep your creatures in play while taking out their one toughness and sometimes their two toughness creatures. Or you can just play this as a gigantic burn spell. Uh, you play Pestilence, next turn you untap with, say, five or six or seven mana, and you just activate all of it if you have more life than your opponent, and if dealing five or six or seven to them will kill them. So it's a very versatile spell, however it is very painful to play in that the damage it deals, it deals to you as well. So even against an aggro deck where all the creatures have one or two toughness, where you would think it would be great, the fact that it also deals damage to you is a definite liability. So that's the reason why it's only as a one of in the deck, however we also have an additional one in the sideboard, because there are many matches that it's good against. Lastly we have what I'm dubbing the card advantage spells. First we have the full four sign in blood. Let's you draw two cards for only two mana, and the life loss is mitigated by the fact that we have Grey Merchant of Asphodel and Tendrils of Corruption. It makes a lot of otherwise unkeepable hands keepable, and lets us keep up against other control decks. Lastly, we have two copies of Unearth. It says, choose target creature card in your graveyard with CMC three or less and put it into play. And then you can cycle it for two colorless mana. This is extremely powerful because it lets us play additional copies of our most important creatures, Chittering Rats and Phyrexian Rager, and pay only a single mana to get them back. And in the situations where you haven't drawn any, so you haven't traded any of them off in combat, you can just cycle this away for two mana and fill up your graveyard while not really getting too far behind on speed. Our mana base is extremely straightforward since we're playing one color deck. We have 18 Swamp, 4 Barren Moor, which are there so that you can cycle them away late game when you don't need any more lands, and a single Bajook Bog, which is there against graveyard decks, especially spells with flashback. Then we have our sideboard. We have 3 Duress, 3 Wrench Mine, and 2 Font of Return, which typically come in in some combination versus control decks, 2 Shrivel and 1 Pestilence, which typically come in against decks with 1 toughness creatures, and 4 Choking Sands, which come in against Tron decks. Anyway, that's it for the deck, so let's get to the matches and see how they go.